could you give us an overview of Broadway Constructions operations and the areas of expertise with the within the construction so Godwit construction uh, is a real estate development firm and uh, we focus or specialize only in one segment of real estate which is industrial real estate and when I say industrial real estate it is industrial buildings which are used for manufacturing as well as warehouses so uh, that is what we do um, as core business uh, just don't go by the name. It is actually a real estate uh, firm, uh, and and we focus on uh, doing uh, industrial real estate developments. So we buy land, we will build the building, and we will lease out to our customers. Uh, what kind of sets us apart from other uh, competitors is uh, while bulk of the people in this business focus on doing what we call as build to suit buildings. We focus on speculative development and when I say speculative development, I will start a building without having an occupier or a customer in mind. So we have standardized our specifications, we have standardized our building designs, so uh, we can go ahead and uh, start our buildings. Our specifications meet 90 to 95% of any manufacturing company's needs. So it's only that uh, last minute 5% uh, tailor-made solutions which are needed. That is what is left at the end. But by and large, 90 to 95% of it is taken care of on day one while we start the building on our own. So can you share some examples of notable steels projects executed by... So we, uh, we use steel in all our buildings. Uh, uh, the the main column, the rafters, the purlins, and the steel sheets. These are all used uh, in our buildings. Typically, uh, a building of about one lakh square feet will consume anywhere between uh, 350 to 500 tons of steel, uh, and we roughly do about a million square feet per annum. So. Uh, by and large, uh, we, we consume about uh, 3,500 to 5,000 tons of steel per annum. Uh, there are no standout structures, but these are all uh, typical steel buildings uh, that we would do for our customers. The, the, uh, the unique challenge in our business is, uh, I, I would say, I would, I would break it down into two or three things. One is, uh, in our business, uh, <coughs> finding the right land uh, to do a project, uh, getting all the clearances, um, getting the change of land use done. These are, these are the biggest uh, uh, challenges in our business. Once, once uh, we have the land in place, then I, I, I would say 95% of our uh, challenges are over. Um, there is still that 5% which is finding the right occupier or the right customer for our building uh, who, who kind of appreciates what we build and pays that amount of rental that we ask for. Uh, it takes about a couple of months uh, when the building is nearing completion to find the right customer who would occupy the building, appreciate what we have done in the building and pay us that rental because uh, we, we charge a premium for the kind of development that we do and not everybody is willing to pay that premium. So somebody who really kind of understands what we have done and is willing to pay that rental is the kind of customer that we look for. So, uh, about five years ago, um, and, and again in next year we are going to face the same problem, is, uh, so this was 2019, um, there was this general election, before the general election there was Holi, which is when all the construction labor typically goes home for Holi celebration. 
immediately after that was uh, the general election and immediately after the general election was the sowing season which is june so the labor which went home in march didn't turn up till june and all my projects were stuck that day we decided that we should move away from labor intensive construction to assembling buildings you know like lego blocks we need to assemble buildings and uh, in i'm i'm happy to say that in 5 years time we've managed to do that today my buildings are a combination of precast concrete and steel construction and i don't do any construction activity at site except flooring i have not found a precast solution for flooring yet but my r&d is still on uh, so that's the only activity which happens at site so from from a 150 to 200 labor working on my site i am today down to 50 so if somebody comes and visits my site they will say that hey why are there no people is this site functional but it is because everything else is been done in a factory and it's only the highly skilled crane operators uh, the guys who do the alignment of the buildings these are the only people who work at the site and not anybody else so we don't have bulk of the people working on site so we managed to get around the biggest challenge that uh, that we face as a construction or a development organization uh, and and uh, going forward we think that uh, you know the 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 approach of assembling buildings as site is the way forward whether you do it as steel buildings whether you do it as precast concrete buildings or a composite of steel and precast concrete like we have done that is the way forward for at least the near future in in construction for that we need skilled labor very high skilled labor how easy it is so uh, very very skilled labor is is uh, is available i wouldn't say it's too much of a challenge because these are typically crane operators uh, people who do alignments of buildings etc and these are these are all very very experienced people who have worked in the middle east want to come back and stay in india now um, and so that that level is available it's only the levels below which is semi skilled and unskilled labor is where this nation is facing an acute problem typically in the good old days what used to happen was that uh, you know the the people who worked in farms or had farm land once the sowing is done they would go to urban areas and work as construction labor with the government's policies of uh, rural employment uh, schemes etc these labor need not come to urban areas and work so it's they do farming and they get rural employment guarantee scheme they don't need to come and work in uh, construction sites anymore that is the crux of the problem today and unfortunately we are not doing anything about it what can be done these freebies need to end is as simple as that all the freebies uh, like rural guarantee rural employment guarantee scheme etc which employs 200 days of Uh, employment in your village needs to end we need or the government needs to relax labor laws and allow us to import people to work i can import labor from philippines i can import labor from indonesia and get them to work on construction sites these are the only two solutions if i need to employ people of my own country then these freebies need to end it is as simple as that sustainability and environmentally friendly construction practices are gaining prominence how does your company incorporate sustainability into your projects so we do uh, four or five things which are standard to our design uh, first first and foremost when we design the buildings we would design it in such a way that the heat load in the building goes down you don't need too much of light you don't need too much of um, you know heat coming inside the building 
So that we figure it out during the design itself. Once the design is done, then we would work on three or four aspects. One is how do we reduce the usage of water? And uh, in all our parks, uh, we do what is called as reverse plumbing. So the water which is treated in uh, the sewage treatment plant is used in flushes. So we would do two plumbing lines, one for fresh water, one for grey water, and they would uh, that water is recycled in flushes. So that water demand comes down. And then whatever is the surplus in that sewage treatment plant is used in gardening. Second is, in all our projects, we create what is called as a small urban forest, which is a very dense Miyawaki plantation, which will create a very high density forest, urban forest, inside each park. And that kind of, you know, we continuously keep planting trees there, uh, creates that uh, A, vibe in the park and B, helps uh, bring up sustainability of our parks. All our structures are designed to carry solar panels. So whether we install solar panels or my occupier installs it, the structure is designed to carry the solar panel. So we encourage all our customers to go in and use solar power as much as possible rather than fossil fuel. And last but not the least, we try and use eco-friendly materials. Like uh, we, in one of the projects, we used uh, recycled rubber tiles in our project. So we try to use innovative new project products in our projects to kind of reduce our footprint on the environment. It, it is these four or five things that we try to do in each and every project. Uh, as a developer, uh, number one, we, we are uh, a key member to nation building um, and uh, we house a lot of manufacturing companies, we house a lot of uh, warehousing companies and these are the people who directly generate employment. The biggest challenge, uh, like I mentioned a little while ago, is acquisition of land, getting uh, the land use converted and getting the building plans sanctioned. We are not saying that the government should do away with all of this. We are only saying that the government should reduce and simplify the entire timeline for all of this. The sooner I can begin a building, the sooner I will finish it, the sooner an occupier will occupy it and generate jobs. Not only will they generate jobs, they will also start giving back the government through taxes, through labor uh, uh, cesses, etc. So the government also starts earning very quickly in the entire process. So it's a win-win situation that we need to create. We are not saying that they should simplify the process. We are only saying that it should be streamlined. We should not be running from pillar to post to get a project kick-started. Uh, and I, I, I think this government understands uh, uh, the challenges. They are working towards it, uh, but a lot n needs to be done. So uh, these are small steps, but we need we need to resolve the bottlenecks in our approval system very quickly. So are there any recent innovations or technologies in construction that have significantly improved the project efficiency or quality? So, uh, we, we, like I mentioned, we have uh, embraced uh, precast and steel combination, a composite structure. Precast is not a new technology for the construction industry. It's a, it's a pretty old uh, uh, technology. However, it is not prevalent in India for the simple reason that uh, for the longest time we were a country which was always saying that, you know, cheap labor is available here. The reality is, it isn't. So we had to work around it, and we've embraced precast construction technology in a very, very big way. Today, right from my footings to the main columns, to the crane gantry beams, etc., all of it comes ready-made from a factory, and I just assemble it at site. What has happened is uh, because of this. 
pre uh, precast days we used to finish a building anywhere between 9 to 12 months today my completion timeline is 6 months my rental begins 3 to 4 5 months earlier and uh, that is a significant uh, amount for a small developer like us however for an occupier also that's an added advantage that he can begin production early for the government it is an added advantage that the taxation revenue begins early so it's it's kind of a win win ecosystem that we have created because of embracing uh, precast come steel construction uh, and we need to do more i mean my fellow brothers from the real estate uh, business who develop residential commercial they need to embrace precast come steel uh, combination to deliver projects uh, very quickly and that's the way forward for all of us So uh, the 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 future of uh, steel industry in the real estate business is immense. Uh, today, um, real estate developers are not using steel in construction. Uh, like you you would not see a, a high rise tower coming up, a residential high rise tower coming up in steel. You would not see a high rise commercial coming up in steel. that is where the headroom is today india is building millions of square feet of real estate and we are not using steel that's where uh, the the steel manufacturing companies the peb guys who do the fabrication the structural designers all need to work together to push steel as a as an alternative material of construction there are a few challenges in this um, that price sensitivity which is there in the real estate market and uh, people will need to find solutions to uh, this price sensitivity because steel has a lot of volatility inherent in its uh, market as such uh, as a product and that needs to be worked out second is there is this misconception that in a steel building you don't get too much flexibility that a brick and mortar will give you and people need to address that steel gives you that flexibility because it's a combination of steel concrete and brick and mortar that you'll be building and you'll still have the brick and mortar to fix a nail where you want to put up your painting you know so that's it is as simple as that uh, uh, people need to work towards that and that's the headroom uh, real estate developers need to embrace steel construction in a big way uh, it's not just for high rise but even for a low rise construction as well i mean uh, high rise when i say high rise it's buildings which are 200 meters tall but what about buildings which are 30 40 50 meters tall nobody is using steel that is where we need to start using as a material pretty soon if we want this country to become a a superpower Thank you.